Restricted free agents Jeremy Swayman and Trent Frederick filed for arbitration on Wednesday. We're going to discuss what that means, as well as break down what Kevin Shatnerkirk and Morgan Geeky said in their media availabilities. And Jacob Lauko back in the mix. All that and more on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day every single day. It was a bit slow going there through May and June with not much to talk about, but we have rebounded with a a big week here on Locked On Boston Bruins because of free agency and player movement and the like. And uh, please do hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. You can find the podcast on Twitter, Instagram at Locked NHL Bruins. And you can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. Now also on threads, if you're over there as well. Not quite ready to give up on Twitter, but uh, creeping closer there uh, day by day. All right, let's talk about Jeremy Swayman, Trent Frederick, and Ian Mitchell for what it's worth. But the two big ones, Frederick Swayman, filing for arbitration on Wednesday. Two of 22 players around the NHL who did so. And uh, there was a lot of, I don't know, anxiety over this, perhaps. Wondering why they just can't get deals done. And it's very possible that they still will meet. What is salary arbitration? Let's talk about that here for a moment. It's a tool used in the NHL to settle contract disputes or let's say differences in valuation between teams and certain restricted free agents. So players like Swayman Frederick, who are restricted free agents can file for salary arbitration. Once that's filed, the deadline was yesterday, 5 PM. A hearing date will be determined during a two week span, usually late July, early August. The two sides can negotiate and come up with a new contract any time before that hearing. In 2021, for example, every player that filed for arbitration settled before their hearing. How it works is both the player and the team present a salary for the upcoming season to a neutral third party. And the two sides will argue their case in front of the arbitrator. Usually what happens is Elia Friedman will tweet the player is asking for X amount, which is usually higher than what everybody expects them to get. The team will come in with their offer, which is usually lower than what everybody expects. And the two sides will come to an agreement. So let's say, for example, Jeremy Swayman, he might come in and say, you know what? We won the Jennings Trophy last year. I was pretty similar to Linus Allmark's production, maybe a bit less. So I want $4.5 million on my next deal. The Bruins will come in hard up against the cap and say, well, you know what? We're going to put it down at one year, $2.5 million. You still need to prove that you can be a top goalie in the NHL. Linus Allmark just won the Vesna, for goodness sake. And then they'll come to an agreement in the middle. Trent Frederick, he'll say, I scored 17 goals this season. I'm worth X amount. The Bruins will say, well, you need, still need some work in these areas. So we're prepared to offer you this amount. The evidence that is allowed to be presented is a player's performance, statistics, injury history, uh, sample size, length of service, leadership qualities and contribution to the team's results. So the Bruins, in Frederick's example, will say, you know what? You were scratched in the playoffs, so maybe you aren't worth that much. 
that's out of his control, of course, but there are reasons why they couldn't uh, or they didn't believe they could count on him in the postseason. Same with Jeremy Swayman. Backing up to begin the playoffs, clearly not the number one goalie, not yet ready to be paid as such. Teams and players cannot use other players' salaries or the state of the team's cap situation during these discussions. So the Bruins can't come in and say, we only have this much space, so we can only pay them this much. That's off the table. That's not relevant. That is their problem, not the player's problem. So the arbitrator determines what the salary should be for the player. And that comes in no more than 48 hours after the hearing has concluded. If the team declines the decision made by the arbitrator, the player becomes an unrestricted free agent and they can sign with any team. That would be a worst case scenario in this circumstance. Uh, the player can never receive less than 85% of a salary from the previous season. So you can't really take a pay cut, uh, but there's no limit to what they are able to um, sign or what they will be awarded. So that's kind of salary arbitration in a nutshell. The dates will be uh, set coming up here in a little bit. Some other notable names around the NHL, Leafs goaltender Ilya Samsonov, Kraken defenseman Vince Dunn, who had an exceptional season, Tanner Genot, who could be a, I've said before, as a comparable for Trent Frederick. And don't forget the Lightning gave up a boatload of assets. Philip Gustafson, who had an excellent season for the Minnesota Wild. Um, and of course, Ian Mitchell, for some reason, taking the Bruins to salary arbitration. Bruins easily could walk away from whatever uh, deal he gets there. So that's salary arbitration in a nutshell. Let me know on YouTube or Twitter threads if you have any further questions. And uh, we'll keep an eye on whether or not they're able to come to deals with Frederick or Swayman prior to uh, the arbitration dates. We're going to talk about Kevin Shattenkirk and Morgan Geeky meeting yesterday with the media here in a moment. Uh, but first, a quick word about today's sponsor, our friends over at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel is the best place to start betting on Major League Baseball. Right now, you can get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets, up to $200. So if you bet $20, bucks, you will land $200 in bonus bets win or lose. That's 200. You can bet on everything from money lines to over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run all on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on major league baseball than FanDuel America's number one sports book. Sign up today, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. And thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your day every single day, free and available on your favorite podcast apps and on YouTube. Please do smash that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing. And everydayers can expect continued coverage of the Boston Bruins Every single day through July 17th. At that point, we'll take a little break and go down to three days a week until uh, training camp tomorrow. Bring you all the latest on the Boston Bruins. And yesterday, I had a chance to partake in some Zoom calls with new Bruins, Kevin Shattenkirk and Morgan Geeky. And Shattenkirk revealed that he thought he might get drafted by the Bruins back in 2007 when he was selected 14th overall by the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, you know, Shattenkirk uh, played 
University Hockey at BU and uh, was highly touted coming out of that draft. The Bruins uh, elected to go with Zach Hamill, seventh overall that year, and probably would have been better served going with Kevin Shattenkirk in that draft proceeding. Shattenkirk at the moment uh, ranks among the top players from that draft with 460 points uh, behind Alex Killorn, P.K. Subban, Michael Backlund, and ahead of uh, Cal Turris, Lars Eller, Ryan McDonough. Another guy from that draft, James Van Riemsdyk, also joining the Bruins uh, recently. Of course, the Bruins going with Hamill, while uh, Logan Couture, oh sorry, he went 8th overall, Logan Couture was picked ninth overall. Anyways, bad memories from the draft. Um, so 16 years later, he's a member of the Bruins, signing a one-year, $1.05 million contract. He said, as a player, you want to play for a team, an organization that has tradition, that has passionate fans, and you feel that every time you come into the garden as an opponent. And that's what he thrives off. He's really looking forward to seeing a packed building every night, fans that are going to wear everything on their sleeves and force you to be the best self on the ice. Shattenkirk last season, 75 games with Anaheim, four goals, 23 assists for 20 seven points he's going to be asked to come in and fill the role left by connor clifton on the third pairing maybe get some power play time um he said the opportunity and the fit was what really appealed to him he wants to be with the stanley cup contender you can argue whether the bruins are that in 2024 but the reality is it's a pretty good fit for uh, for Kevin Shattenkirk filling in for Connor Clifton. He'll probably get some power play time and he will be tasked with probably playing with Derek Forbort and uh, providing some good defense and strong puck movement from the back end. Now he was at BU when the Bruins won the cup. He was at the parade in 2011. So he knows what it's like to play in a or to live in Boston at peak Bruins levels. Um, He has some connections to Charlie McAvoy, both being from Long Island. And he played with Hampus Lindholm on the Ducks uh, back in 2020-21, before Lindholm was traded to the Boston Bruins. So he has some familiarity there as well. Uh, He wants to be a sounding board for some of these younger guys in a power play role. He's going to adopt and, you know, he's talked to Jim Montgomery, talked to Charlie and Hampus, two Norris caliber defensemen, still growing into their expectations as players. And uh, he's going to kind of come in, be a support to them and uh, looking forward to playing with Brad Marchand instead of against him. He said he looked at the decor and some of the great players the Bruins have back there. He knows he's a third pair guy. Probably if there's a need for him to jump in and fill in via injury or whatever, he's capable of doing that. He'll play some minutes, five on five second power play, and he can run that and hopefully add a little bit of depth there with the team. So I'm excited to see Kevin Shattenkirk in black and gold. And uh, I think He's a pretty valuable addition, especially just for a year, low cost, nothing to lose there. As for Morgan Geeky, he signed a two-year deal with a $2 million cap hit, and the Bruins are making a bit more of an investment in him, saying that he's going to have a bigger role than he had in Seattle. He had nine goals, 19 assists, 28 points in very limited minutes. And he feels that given an opportunity, he can bring more to the team. He was playing on a a more offensively minded fourth line in Seattle. 
gained a lot of confidence. He's excited about where his game is at, and he's excited where it can get to and how it can grow. He did play with Brandon Carlo for the Tri-City Americans. I also asked him about playing with Parker Witherspoon, who likely will be at the AHL, but also played with Geeky at the uh, junior level with Tri-City. He is a very strong skater. He can play a very fast game, a little bit expanded role, and a few more minutes. He said, quote, I think I can get into more of a rhythm and grow myself and be the player that I know I can be and help the team in the best way I can. He's a very versatile forward, can play center or the wing, and uh, I'm really excited to see what Morgan Geeky can bring to the table next season. I think that's a really underrated signing by Don Sweeney. Don't let it get lost in the Lucic Van Riemsdyks of it all. Uh, Geeky can be a very productive member of the Boston Bruins, and he's going to get a chance here certainly with uh, his versatility. Again, only nine goals, 19 assists in 69 games last year. He was drafted third overall by the Carolina Hurricanes back in 2017. Hurricanes always draft well. Uh, He was lost to Seattle in the expansion draft, and uh, we can expect him to, yeah, provide some pop and energy and youth to the Bruins lineup. Only 24 years old, although he will turn 25 here in a couple weeks. In Tri-City, he had a 35-goal, 90-point season, a uh, 84-point season as well. So he can put the puck in the net. He can generate some offense, and I'm excited to see what Morgan Geeky can do in an expanded role in Boston. Probably going to be on the third line. Uh, I could see a, a, a Geeky, Coyle, Frederick, perhaps, or if Coyle's up in the top six, Geeky, Frederick, uh, and who knows who will be on the right side there, but maybe you could have Geeky, Frederick, Van Riemsdyk. Who knows? That's Jim Montgomery's uh, area of expertise. And maybe sometime next week when the dust has settled, we'll look at what the lineup will look like on opening night. A guy who will challenge for a spot is Jacob Lauko. And we'll discuss his re-signing here after the break. All right, the Boston Bruins on Wednesday announced contracts for two restrictive free agents. One being goaltender Cal Kieser, a one-year two-way contract with an NHL cap hit of $775,000, 900 save percentage with Providence last season. He will likely serve as backup to Brandon Bussey in Providence this coming season. Now, the Bruins also have Michael DiPietro as an unrestricted Oh, sorry, a restricted free agent. Are they going to carry three goalies at the AHL level? Difficult to say. We'll see whether or not he's moved at some point. But Kyle Kieser under contract here uh, for one more season. Jacob Lauko also signed a two-year contract. Annual cap hit of $787,500. This one's interesting. It's a two-way contract for this coming season in a one-way contract for 2024-25. Now, he had a very good year this past year. 23 games, four goals, three assists. Also brought a ton of energy to the table and, you know, even got into the lineup in the playoffs, which was pretty impressive. He was brought in for one game, at least, in lieu of Trent Frederick, but... They certainly saw something in him that um, determined they he could help turn the tables against the Florida Panthers. Obviously, it didn't happen, but still, uh, a lot of upside with him. A third-round pick back in 2018, 77th overall. He had 10 goals in 35 games, down in Providence, four goals in 23 games. Obviously, his offense isn't the whole story. He brings a lot of energy, a lot of pop. Uh, Dauber prospects calls him a dangerously fast forward with potential to put up points. 
capable of playing center, but ends up being a winger likely, which he will with the Bruins. They also wrote, Lauko leaped into the NHL this season, seven points in 23 games. He started with Providence, 17 points in 35 games, and helped the Bruins break league records on their way to the President's Trophy. He may find himself on the outside looking in come playoff time when everybody gets healthy, but he's done more than enough to earn a full-time NHL promotion for the future. Lauko should find a spot in the bottom six, has to adapt his game at the professional level, um, and uh, but there's still a lot of potential there for some energy in the bottom six. So congrats to Jacob Lauko. We'll see if he's back to posting those Abe Simpson gifts being up and down this next season as he's only on a two-way contract, but guaranteed one way for the next season. All right, that is it for today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I was able to explain the arbitration situation well. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow, Friday, to bring you all the latest on the black and gold here on Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. What's up? I need most of it. Oh, pfft.